Hey there friends, and welcome back for another episode of Unboxing the Birmingham Museum, where every episode I just go to a random storage area on the premises of the Birmingham Museum and I open up a random box because we have so many things in our collection, not one staff member has opened up every single box that we have here. So it's a learning experience for everyone and we're taking advantage of the fact that we are currently closed to the public, unfortunately, um, due to the coronavirus. But on the plus side, we can open up random boxes. So thank you so much for joining me today. Right now I am outside of another closet on the upstairs of the Allen house. And we are currently in a very narrow hallway. As you can tell, there's closets on either end of this hallway. And I'm standing in front of the closet where we have a lot of our military collections, primarily military uniforms from individuals who have served their country who are either from Birmingham or lived in Birmingham. As the Birmingham Museum, the one in Michigan, uh, we collect things that tell the story of the city of Birmingham. So let's dive in and open up one of the boxes. And we really only have one big box here, so let's open it up. And this one, in addition to having its accession number on the box, also lets us know what's inside. And so this one is the military uniform of Philip K. Wind. So let's go in. We got a couple little boxes in here. So I've got this one here. It's a little acid free box. And it looks like from the outside it has about four items inside. Oh, cool. And these are patches patches from this gentleman's uniform. So I will throw up closer images of these when I go back into editing so you can see all of them for yourself. So they're really cool and on the back of them we have sewn on their individual accession numbers. As you've probably seen from Donna's video there's a couple different ways to affix accession numbers to every object. And the accession number can tell us a lot of things such as what year these things were accessioned. So these were all in 2004 and we had a really big year in 2004. We had at least 71 different lots of items come in. And this was a really big accession as well because this is the 17th item in that collection. Um, and underneath the patches here, we have a picture, and I'm gonna assume that this is Philip Wind. Or Richard, sorry, Richard K. Wind, 1942, Lieutenant Richard Cole Wind, September 1942, Miami Beach, Florida. All right, so we're gonna put all these patches back. Putting things back where you found them is super important um, because if we go to say put these on display at a later date and I've moved them somewhere they're going to be very hard to find again and everyone is going to be really mad at me and I would prefer that no one be super mad at me for moving things around. I'm just going to set these down. All right so I've got another little box here. Oh and this is cool. Um, we have some pins that were probably at one point affixed to his uniform. And again, I'll put up closer images of those. And uh, oh, dog tags as well. Wow, these are, I mean, dog tags are so personal, I think. And you just have a lot of information on them. So this is, again, Richard K. Wind. Um, and the return address on these is Elizabeth A. Wind of Detroit, Michigan. So put those back in the little box here. Set these off to the side so we can 
get into, oh, yep, and here we have, there's a lot of pieces in here, so I'm just gonna pull out a couple of them um, because it looks like we have his dress uniform as well. Um, including, wow, we got everything. We even have his belt. How cool is that, huh? We have his cap and it's filled on the inside with acid-free tissue paper just to give it some shape. Um, and that way it's not gonna bend too much in the box and have some crease lines and also um, wear away at those crease lines. If you've ever put things folded up in a box for a while, you'll notice that sometimes where it's been folded, those crease lines, the fabric starts warping, it starts, it could even tear. Um, so we wanna make sure that these items stay in as pristine a condition as possible. Um, when we take things into a museum's collection, we're promising to take care of these things in perpetuity. Um, so we really have to do our due diligence to make sure that these things are going to stand the test of time and survive so that the next generation of museum employees can come across these and put them on display for everyone to enjoy. All right. Oh wow, and um, on the inside of the collar here, we have the gentleman's name and I'm assuming his division, where he could be found. So here we've got his shirt. You'll notice we also have some patches on the side of his shirt as well. So, wow, this is really cool. And as I'm pretty bad at folding these things, um, I'm not gonna take everything out because um, I wouldn't be able to put things back in as neatly as I found them. But yeah, we have a couple different uniforms we have pants too. You know, sometimes pants don't survive that well. Um, and I'm assuming that's because people were wearing their pants for longer than they were wearing the rest of the uniform. Um, so let's, let's pull these out. Can we do this? Cool. So here is and you can see on the inside here, we do have the accession number. When you're sewing labels onto textiles, you want to make sure that these are pretty easy to find without having to take the entire item out of the box or to unfold the entire item. So you definitely don't want to sew it into a random spot in the leg um, because that would be very hard for someone in the future to find. And as things are in more and more delicate condition, those could be, um, you could do damage to the object trying to find that accession number. So I'm gonna put all of these things back, but thank you so much for joining us for unboxing the Birmingham Museum. And we're gonna do it again, another storage area in the Birmingham Museum. We have a lot of them. As a lot of small historic museums know, you use every single inch of available space for storage. And uh, that's exactly what we do here. So thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.